Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel, Cracking IELTS 9.0. Today we will be discussing Cambridge 16, Test 3, Reading Passage 1. As you can see, the heading is a Roman Shipbuilding and Navigation. This is the Academic Reading Module. First of all, I will show you what I have got. So this is the first page where we have some paragraphs and then this is the second page where we have some more paragraphs these are the first set of questions true false and not given we have five questions and then comes our fill-ups right so total we have 13 questions for the first paragraph so let's don't waste much time and let's dive into the subject right Right, what's the first question? The Romans shipbuilding skills were passed down to the Greeks and the Egyptians. Right, so what are the keywords here? The Romans shipbuilding skills were passed down to the Greeks and the Egyptians. So these are all our keywords and we will try to look for these keywords, right? Yes, so let's read the first paragraph now. Shipbuilding today is based on science and ships are built using computers and sophisticated tools. Shipbuilding in ancient Rome, however, was more of an art. See, art is the keyword relying on estimation, inherited techniques, and personal experience. The Romans were not traditionally sailors. See, the Romans were not traditionally sailors, but mostly land-based people who learned to build ships from the people that they conquered, namely the Greeks and the Egyptians. Wow. These were our keywords, right? So what does this last sentence say? The Romans were not traditional sailors. They learned shipping from, from people that they conquered. So Romans conquered these Greeks and Egyptians and they learned from them. So what does our question say? The Roman shipbuilding skills were passed on to Greeks and Egyptians. No. They learned from Greeks and Egyptians, they did not pass on. So this clearly contradicts the statement. Hence, what is the answer? It is false, clearly, right? Good. So let's look at the second one. Skilled craftsmen were needed for the mortise and tenon method of fixing planks. Okay, so what are the keywords? Skilled craftsmen were needed for the mortise and tenon method. So this is a method of fixing planks, right? So let's see, let's read further. There are a few surviving written documents that give descriptions and representations of ancient Roman ships, including the sails and rigging. Excavated vessels also provide some clues about ancient shipbuilding techniques. Studies of these have taught us that the ancient Roman shipbuilders built the outer hull first, okay, then proceeded with the frame and the rest of the ship, okay, planks used to build the outer hull were initially swimmed together starting from the 6th century bce they were fixed using a method called mortise and tenon so this is our method right whereby one plank locked into another without the need for stitching okay so one plank is locked into another okay so then in the first centuries of the current era military Mediterranean shipbuilders shifted to another shipbuilding method still in use today, which consisted of building the frame first. Here they built the frame first and then proceeding with the hull and the other components of the ship. This method was more systematic and dramatically shortened ship construction times. The ancient Romans built large merchant ships and warships whose size and technology were unequal until the 16th century CE. Okay. So what we read about the mortise and tenon method, it is here, right? So starting from the 6th century BC, they were fixed using a method called mortise and tenon, whereby one plank is locked into another. So yes, what was the question? Skilled craftsmen were needed for mortise and tenon method for fixing planks. Did the passage talk about any skilled craftsmen? No. The passage told only about the mortise and tenon method of fixing planks, but this skilled craftsman, it is not mentioned anywhere in the passage. Hence, what will be the answer? It's 
not given, right? Right. Hence it is not given. Right. What is the next question? Right. The later practice used by the Mediterranean shipbuilders involved building the hull before the frame. Okay. So the later practice used by the Mediterranean shipbuilders involved building the hull before the frame. So first hull, then frame. That's what he is talking about in this practice. Okay. So let's read. I think we had the answer in the same paragraph, right? So this is the first method, mortis and tenon. Then the next method is this one. Mediterranean shipbuilders shifted to another shipbuilding method which consisted of building the frame first and then proceeding with the hull. See here he is telling frame is built first, then the hull. What is the question saying? In all building the hull, hull first before the frame. So this is clearly contradicting, right? Hence it is false. Okay. Let's move to the next question. The Romans called the Mediterranean Sea Mare Nostrum because they dominated its use. Okay, keywords the Romans called the Mediterranean Sea Mare Nostrum because they dominated its use. Domination is the keyword here. Let's read further, guys. See, where is our keyword? It is here. Can we see in third paragraph Mare Nostrum, meaning our sea? So, Mare Nostrum is the keyword. So, let's read the last sentence. No need to read, no need to read the whole paragraph, right? We will read the last statement. That's it. Warships used both wind sails and human power. Human power is called oarsman. Wind is called sails, right? And were therefore very fast. Eventually, Rome's navy became the largest and most powerful in the Mediterranean. And the Romans had control over what they therefore called Mare Nostrum, meaning our sea. See, the Romans had control over, control over, dominating. Can you understand? This is the synonym. So the Romans had control over the Mediterranean Sea, which they called Mer Nostrum, which means our sea, right? So what is the answer for the fourth one then? I hope you guys are following me, right? The Romans called the Mediterranean Sea Mer Nostrum because it dominated its use. Yes, they had control over it, right? Hence, the answer is true, clearly. Next, most rovers on ships were people from the Roman army. So most of the rovers on the ship were people from the Roman army. So these are the keywords. So let's read and understand. There were many kinds of warship. The Trireme was the dominant warship from the 7th to 4th century BCE. It had rovers in the top, middle and lower levels and approximately 50 rovers in each bank. The rovers at the bottom had the most uncomfortable position as they were under the other rovers and were exposed to the water entering through the oar holes. It is worth noting that contrary to popular perception, rovers were not slaves but mostly Roman citizens enrolled in the military. Okay, military. The trim was superseded by large ships with even more rovers. Okay, so what does this one say? Rovers were not slaves. Okay, rovers mean the people who are uh, rowing, trying to row the ship, right? They were not slaves, but mostly Roman citizens itself enrolled in the military. Means army, right? So what does the question say? Most rovers on ships were people from the Roman army. Yes, they were from the military, right? So they were from the Roman army. True, hence the answer is true, right? So let's move to the next set of questions guys. Right, these are next set of questions which is Phillips. So what is the instruction we have? One word only, okay? Whatever we write, it should be only in one word. So yes, warships and merchant ships, right. Warships were designed so that they were dashed and moved quickly. Mm -hmm. Warships were built to be lightweight and very speedy. Mm. Built means designed lightweight and very speedy see look at the synonyms very speedy means moved quickly right warships were designed means built so that they were what lightweight right so the answer is lightweight so this is only one word don't write it as two separate words okay right 
तो वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ बैटरिंग रैम मेड ऑफ डैश वॉज इंक्लूडेड इन द डिजाइन फॉर अटैकिंग एंड डैमेजिंग द टिम्बर एंड ओवर्स ऑफ एनिमी शिप्स ओके ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट सम रैम राइट सो यस लेट्स इट फर्दर दे हैड टू बी एबल टू सेल नियर द कोस्ट विच इज वाई दे हैड नो बलर्स और एक्सेस लोड एंड वर बिल्ट इन टू नैरो हल द डिड नॉट सिंक वन डैमेज एंड ऑफ वन would like crippled on the sea surface following navy battles naval battles right they had a bronze battering ram see battering ram this was our question right they had a bronze battering ram which was used to pierce the timber hulls or break the oars of enemy vessels yes i think we got the answers right see a battering ram made of bronze right made of bronze was included in the design for attacking and damaging the timber and oars of enemy ships yes so enemy vessels enemy ships means enemy vessels it was a bronze battering ram right warships such as trireme had rowers on three different dash oh there were three different uh, we read just now right see the trireme was the dominant warship from the 7th to 14th century it had rowers in the top middle and lower levels see these are the three different levels right top middle and lower so what will be the answer we had rowers on three different levels right that is the top middle and lower level okay all right unlike warships merchant ships had a broad dash that lay far below the surface of the sea so this is our passage about merchant ships okay so let's read this and try to understand okay merchant ships were built to transport lots of cargo over long distances and at a reasonable cost they had a wider hull double planking and a solid interior for added stability okay unlike warships their v shaped hull was deep under water meaning that they could not sail too close to the coast okay to they could not sail too close to the coast so that is the keyword here see what is he talking about look at this unlike warships merchant ships had a broad dash that lay for below the surface of the sea so they cannot sail too close to the coast what is it because of what yes because of their v shaped hull was deep under water meaning that they could not sail too close to the coast so what is v shaped hull but our answer should be only one word so what is that it is hull okay is hull next merchant ships was steered through the water with the help of large rudders and a tilled bar they had both square and dash sails both square and dash so he is talking about some shape square rectangle some these type of shapes he is talking about okay right they usually had two huge side rudders located off the stern and controlled by a small tiller bar connected to a system of cables they had from 1 to 3 masts which large square sails and a small triangular sail at the bow yes so they had both square and a triangular sail that's what he is telling us right see they had both square and triangular is talking about the shape here right triangular sails good next on merchant ships and warships dash was used to ensure rowers moved their oars in and out of water at the same time so dash was used to uh, ensure the rowers moved their oars at the same time let's read further see what is mentioned here just like warships merchant ships use oarsmen but coordinating the hundreds of rowers in both types of ship was not an easy task in order to assist them music would be played on an instrument and oars would then keep time with this yeah keep time with this what does that means moving at the same time because of what 
in order to assist them music see music would be played on an instrument so what is used here hence on merchant ships and warships music okay music was used to ensure rowers moved their oars in and out of the water at the same time clear right i hope you are following me guys please concentrate quantities of agricultural goods such as dash were transported by merchant ships to two main ports in italy so these are our keywords two main ports in italy and agricultural goods such as dash so let's read further okay the cargo on merchant ships included raw materials example iron bars copper marble and granite and agricultural products example grain from egypt nile valley wow i think we got the answer right so agricultural products what is it example grain okay that's what he is talking about so agricultural goods such as grain were transported to italy right the ships were pulled to the shore by dash okay what is used to pull it ashore okay during the empire rome was a huge city by ancient standards of about 1 million inhabitants goods from all over the world would come to the city through the port of pozzoli situated west of the bay of naples in italy and through the gigantic port of ostia situated at the mouth of the tiber river large merchant ships would approach the destination port and just like today be intercepted by a number of tow boats that would drag them to the quay see they are intercepted by number of tow boats that would drag them to the quay drag them means pulling them ashore right so these tow boats used to take them ashore what is the answer the ships were pulled to the shore by tow boats okay right right guys yes so that is the so this is the end of uh, today's session guys we have completed the passage 1 of test free let's meet again in some other video please do not forget to like share and subscribe this will be really helpful for your friends and your family members who are trying to crack the ielts test right till then have a good day bye bye